G'day everyone, thanks for coming down to the beautiful Darwin uh, Cenotaph here on the Esplanade. Uh, my name's Luke Gosling, I'm the Federal Member for Solomon, so Darwin and Palmerston. Uh, I'm also a veteran and incredibly proud to be a member of Anthony Albanese's Federal Labor team. It's great to have Albo in Darwin. It's also aw awesome to be with uh, the rest of our team. We've got Warren Snowden and the person that hopefully will be taking over from Warren, Marion Scrimjaw, and also our NT Senator, uh, Melandiri McCarthy. Um, we've had a wonderful ceremony here, a very poignant ceremony made incredibly special with the presence of Brian Winspear, who was here during the war. He's 101 years old, uh, and it's wonderful that he was able to join us, uh, but also our friends from Timor, from the United States, and from Japan, to remember all those that were lost. 80 years ago, Four score years ago, right here, uh, Darwin was attacked. But as the great Labor Prime Minister of the time, John Curtin, said, Darwin has been bombed but not conquered. One of the reasons I'm incredibly proud to be part of Anthony Albanese's team is that he is a leader in the model of John Curtin and it's awesome to have him here today. Thanks, Albo. Well, thanks very much, Luke. Uh, some days this job is just such an incredible honour and this morning to meet Brian Winspear and to escort him to this morning's commemorations with Chief Minister Michael Gunner is one of those. Uh, Brian is the happiest 101 year old I have ever met. He's full of joy and he is uh, a sprightly uh, young 100 years, one years and today I think for me uh, it was such an honour uh, to meet Brian and to have the opportunity to engage with him. But of course today has also been about the commemoration 80 years ago today when World War II came to our shores with the bombing of Darwin. Uh, the fact that uh, Darwin showed the resilience and courage and strength of Australian culture in resisting uh, what were, was the first of dozens of raids over a period of two years and that Darwin today is of course a modern thriving city, a city uh, which is very important uh, as our northern capital. And today's ceremony was an opportunity to reflect on the events of 80 years ago but also uh, to recommit to a stronger Australia going forward and I was very pleased to be able to be here uh, with my Labor team, uh, Luke uh, Malandiri and of course our outgoing member uh, for Lingari, uh, Warren Snowden, who's been such an extraordinary representative over a long period of time. And of course Marion Scrimjaw, a former Deputy Chief Minister of the Northern Territory, who we sincerely hope uh, joins the Labor team as part of a Labor government after the next election. Prime Minister, we've been reminded this morning. Uh, they, they don't, don't be preemptive, but. <coughs> no, no, your, your, your title you just gave me. So, oh, so I, um, I, we, we have democracy in this country, and I'm very much a candidate for that position. Um, we've been reminded of the cost of, of war this morning. Do you think that the, the tone and the rhetoric of politics in the last week has undermined our national security? Uh, there's no doubt that some of the tone and the rhetoric uh, that has been used by Scott Morrison and the government this week reflects a political desperation and it's been called out by the Department of Defence Secretary Greg Moriarty, by the Director General of Asia, by former uh, Director General of Asia, former Ambassador to Washington, former Head of Defence and Foreign Affairs Dennis Richardson. Uh, we have a national interest in our unity and what we shouldn't be doing is trying to conflate uh, false distinctions where there are none. Australia's national interest is based upon us being united as a people, not being divided. And part of my pitch to the Australian people is I want to take Australia forward as one. Scott Morrison is prepared to undermine the national interest to prop up a prime ministership that has never been about much more of it than extending beyond his own self-interest. 
and I think uh, if you want to stop discussion about the crisis in aged care, about the fact that wages are going backwards, about uh, the failure to have an economic plan for the future, a failure to have an energy policy in this country that provides security uh, for workers going forward, a failure to deliver on key promises, including advancing the Uluru Statement from the Heart, including having di discrimination law about religious freedom, including having a National Anti-Corruption Commission, uh, then no doubt uh, you'll try to conflate issues and, and have a look over there a moment. Uh, Australia is united in terms of our national interest. Both Labor and the Coalition have exactly the same policy when it comes to China and uh, there is no national interest in the Prime Minister seeking to undermine that. Well, I, I, I think it's weak to undermine the national interest. I think it's weak to not be prepared to have a debate about economic policy. I think it's weak to decline, as the Prime Minister did this week in the Parliament, when I moved for him to have 10 minutes to talk about national security and me to have 10 minutes to reply. Uh, this is a Prime Minister who knows that his rhetoric doesn't meet the facts. This is a Prime Minister who knows that I've been in public life for 25 years. I've been engaged in the Australia-US leadership dialogue uh, for two decades. I met with Secretary of State Blinken uh, last Friday, uh, eight days ago and renewed my friendship with Kirk Campbell and other people in the US administration. Uh, the fact is that I'll always stand up for Australia's national interest based upon our three pillars of our foreign policy, our alliance with the United States, regional engagement and our support for multilateral forums, including the United Nations. Well, I certainly hope that it's not, and I call upon Russia to back off. Yet again, there is no place for the intimidation that we've seen from Russia with the massing of troops on the Ukrainian border. I met with the Federation of Ukrainian Organisations in Melbourne uh, eight days ago and uh, heard from them the concern which is there from Australians of Ukrainian descent, but that is shared by the wider Australian community. Uh, we know that uh, the ravages of war have real consequences. And the ravages of war in the Ukraine, if Russia uh, carries out a military intervention, uh, will be devastating uh, for the people of Ukraine, but also there will be loss of life and uh, economic consequences as well uh, for a, a period to come. So I'd say to Russia, it needs to respect Ukrainians' sovereignty and it needs to back off now. Sure. Um, on the uh, the second response, uh, I haven't had an opportunity because I've been uh, I've been uh, obviously, as you can see, I've been at the commemoration today. So I haven't had an opportunity to look at the petition. I'll have a look at it and give due consideration. I have respect for people, uh, and the woman involved didn't tell me what it was about. Uh, she had uh, so it was a closed uh, letter. Um, I'll examine it, and I will certainly. Uh, commit to uh, getting back to her. Uh, it is important in this great country. One of the things that we have in this country, in our great democracy, is that people can approach the alternative Prime Minister and give them a, a petition uh, about an issue of concern. And uh, I certainly will uh, read uh, that and will respond uh, to the woman involved. As for Scott Morrison uh, not attending this morning's commemoration, uh, that's really a matter for, for him to answer. Uh, I don't uh, play politics with these issues. It's a matter for him uh, that uh, I did notice, obviously, that, uh, that he wasn't there. It was a very good service, can I say that, and it was an honour for me to attend. As for the Prime Minister's itinerary, that's a matter for him. Yes.
Look, I certainly did see uh, the program on Don Dale, and I think it shocked all Australians. Uh, we need to do much better. Uh, we need to, this morning, I, I acknowledged the, the Uluru Statement from the Heart. Uh, when we do that, the country will advance as a whole and we'll wonder what the fuss was about. It reminds me of uh, what occurred with the apology to stolen generations that Kevin Rudd gave. It took a change of government for that to happen. And whilst uh, some people in the parliament resisted and walked out at the time, overwhelmingly it's recognised, I think, by everyone now that we advanced as a country. But that was just one part. The second part of that was to lead to closing the gap, uh, practical reconciliation, making a difference when it comes to incarceration rates of First Nations people, making a difference to people's health. We still have not so much a gap as a chasm in too many areas of education, health and other areas. And that's one of the reasons why this magnificent young woman here, Marion Scrimgeour, will make a fantastic member for Lingari. And we had our pre-selection processes. I was very pleased, can I say this, uh, that Marion was prepared to put herself forward. Uh, she's someone who will be a representative, of course, of all people in Lingari, but will join uh, an extraordinary uh, First Nations uh, caucus as part of our Labor government if we're successful. And when you have uh, Marion Scrimgeour joining, uh, Linda Burney, Patrick Dodson, and my good friend who's here, Senator Mallandiri McCarthy, that's a powerful team. Thanks very much.